back by popular demand. It's Women on the Move Live. And yes, I'm back to your host, Dr. Kim McNair. Join us every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And you can watch us live on YouTube and Facebook. We'll have great guests with unique opportunities to share, learn, and grow so that we all can be what? On the move. So don't forget, mark your calendars every Tuesday evening, 6 p.m., Women on the Move Live. I'll see you then. The American dream. It wasn't made for everybody. It forgot about one very important detail. Black America. It's why this land of equal opportunity was built on the backs and genius of black people. And why black success isn't always a story of accomplishment, but a story of getting out. But black Americans woke up a long time ago and set out to make their own dream. They had to. We've seen it in Atlanta, the city we call home, and communities all around America. Black dreams matter. Black voices matter. Black lives matter. Black America's dream is the real American dream because it means everyone has a chance to succeed. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Women on the Move Live. It is a full hour power. Let's come on. You guys hit that share button. We getting started. Yeah, move, 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 move. Yes, yes. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> what's up? What's up? That's right. We are live right here in the studio. One hour full of power, and I'm just so excited to bring it to you once again. I am your host, Dr. Kim McNair. Boy, oh boy, and they say I'm a little extraordinaire. How about that? <laughs> it's all right. Well, I'm so glad to be with you. I am so excited about the guests that I have on this evening. Uh, I have three amazing guests. They are, uh, some is family, some I've known for many, many years, and some I've met along the way. But you know what? They are here today to share with each and every one of you some amazing things that they're doing, giving you a lot of good information. We're going to talk about women's health because, you know, we're women on the move. We got to make sure we got our stuff right and tight. I'm telling you. We're going to talk a little bit about the vaccines. I have someone going to talk about. We, we have so much going on with the different vaccines. Now they're stopping one. Whew, we need to know what to do because we want to continue to live, be alive, and thrive, okay? Yes, we do. I want to welcome everyone from all over the world. Good evening, good morning, uh, good afternoon, whatever the time may be for you, wherever you are. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, again, hit that button. Sharing is caring, okay? Sharing is caring. I need you to share. Some people are coming in. Let's see who's in, who's speaking to us before we bring on our guests. Who we have saying hello this evening? Because I want to say hi to everybody. Hey, Joy's in the building. Hello, Joy. What's going on? Hey, Corlette is in the building. What's going on? Dr. Lucille, you in the building, girl. Did you hear what I said earlier? <laughs> I got that from you. Hello, Sabrina. What's going on? Oh, okay. You like the little blonde streaks? They said blondes have more fun. Yeah, we kicked it off with the little Jaheem right there. Hey, how you doing? Let's get it going and do what we have to do. Hey, I'm Empowered Live is on. Hello, how are you? I'm just glad to be here and share with you all this evening. Woo, it's so much going on, but I do want to take a moment to just address mm, this. It just keeps happening. Being a mother of boys, I have sons, okay? And I worry every day that they go out to do the things that they need to do, driving, the driving, uh, just being wherever. And I'm a, also a nana. I got some grandsons. They're not big enough, to, old enough to drive or do anything. But you know what? There's a lot going on. And I just want to say my heart goes out uh, to another family. Uh, Dante Wright lost his life senselessly. Um, it's a lot going on with that. We're already dealing with the the George Floyd, right? And then this happens. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's just too much. And 
if we can't do anything, if we can just tell the law enforcement people that are out there, just pause a little bit, take a deep breath. Don't think that because somebody is a certain race and, and they got tenant windows that they're doing something wrong. Take a deep breath. If you feel that it may be something that's, that's a little sketchy, right? You would think the cops would know to, let me go ahead and call for backup. Let me just get somebody else here to be on the scene so that nothing pops off crazy and we can address this because a traffic stop is just a traffic stop. Give them a ticket and let them go. We don't have to get so, you know, physical and, and just crazy with these guns. It's crazy. I'm telling you. And I just, my heart goes out to the family and, uh, and other parents, because now as a mom with adult boys, I have to think about that. I'm looking at the phone. I used to, you know, I had my phone where it just turned off at night. I'm not turning my phone off again at night because I need to be able to just, and, but I gotta, I gotta remember I'm fearless. I'm not supposed to live in fear, right? I have faith, but I am still human. And that is a fleshly human side of me. I trust God. I trust in him. I know he's watching. I pray all the time for all of my children, your children, and everybody's children. Okay. Just guys, we just got to take care, you know, do what we got to do. That's right, Sabrina. It's senseless violence. Yes, it is. Call it what it is. It's racial profile. Yes, ma'am. Mm, mm, mm. So that's why I started to show off tonight with that video, because I thought it was very important. We just have to keep it top of mind as we are going on doing our daily duties and things that we have to do. We have to keep it at top of mind. So anyway let's keep it moving let's 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 keep it on the move right <laughs> look guys i have a great guest i'm about to bring on he is truly an amazing person we met many years ago you've seen him uh in the studio when we were live on tv here in atlanta uh, dr Littman, john Littman, was on and he talked to us about some things that he was doing some new procedures things that um that we Often we hear about where we're kind of a little scared to take, you know, to really kind of go in and get it taken care of, or we just don't have a clear understanding of certain things. Well, I am bringing on the expert. He's going to talk to us about fibroids, the different procedures, things that he's doing, innovative things that you didn't even know about. So without further ado, let me welcome to the stage, to the, to the stage right here. Sabrina, bring him on in. Dr. John Littman. What's up, John? Hey, good evening. How, you How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Awesome. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you too, you are, my dear friend. I tell you, it's been a little bit. I think the last time we saw each other was it at it was it the brunch breakfast we went to? Yeah, we were having chicken. <laughs> Hot chicken. Yeah, we went to a, 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 a it, what, I, I'm trying to think of the place we were at, but we had a good time. It was, it was really good. We had a good time and, um, you know, we just, it, it's just always good to see you and your lovely wife, Jane. We, that is my friend, me and her, that's my sister friend. We be gone doing things and, <laughs> and having a good time. So thank you so much. Thank you for always supporting Women on the Move. You supported- sure. The, my nonprofit organization, and I really appreciate it because you know you are also an entrepreneur. You know you started your business a certain way. I remember when we had the event out at the convention center, and you were right. able to talk about how you began doing what you did, and people needed to understand and see. You know, hey, don't think it goes this way. I had to start a business too, so thank right. you. Right, so and, and medicine. I have my own practice, the Atlanta Fibroid Center, um, and I realized that medicine was practiced a certain way and I didn't want to practice it that way. I wanted to have real customer service, real real caring for patients. Hospitals really don't get it. Right. I can spend the time. I don't need to go through 50 people in an afternoon. I might see five or six and I just take my time. I can Good. Spend, the, spend the appropriate time. I mean, people can't believe the experience that they get at the Atlanta Fibroid Center because I control the environment I hire. When I was at a hospital, everybody was a reflection of me and I didn't hire any of them, but the hospital did, but they were you know, a reflection of, of me. And I, I just, I'm so glad I'm away from the hospitals. <laughs> my, my staff is wonderful. The nurses oh. are wonderful. I mean, when, when you're caring for a small number of patients, you can really do it well. At the hospital, one nurse might be responsible for five, six, seven patients or more. 
everybody at the Atlanta Fibroid Center, one nurse, one patient. Wow, that's wonderful. That's their only wonderful. responsibility until they're out of the center. It's, it's a completely different experience. In fact, patients were saying, I haven't had anything like this in healthcare. I might have maybe at the Ritz-Carlton or the Four Seasons, but <laughs> never in healthcare. This is a wonderful place. You have a awesome. wonderful staff, and it's true, I do. That is great, John. That is wonderful. And look, that I mean, that's to be commended. I mean, you're celebrating 30 years. Oh, my gosh. That's years. right. 30 years. You believe it? That is wonderful. Yes. That, I mean, and look at you. You're still thriving. You're still getting it going. You're still doing oh. the same thing. And it's and you're 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 there. You know, some some practices come and go. Right. Well, and a lot of physicians you read about a lot of physician burnout. They're they're just burned out from medicine. Uh -huh. I, truly, this is not cliche. I love coming to work. I really do. Oh. I have, again, such a fabulous group of people to work with. And I hire for what I call hospitality quotient, not wow. IQ, HQ. The hospitality quotient is the amount that someone derives in pleasing other people. So I can teach them, you know, the stuff I need to teach them. But uh -huh. the HQ you either have or you don't have. Right, right. It's what's in it's what's in your heart. Yes, so, sir. Yes, you sir. Got it, you don't. And if you don't, you don't work here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's awesome. Wow. Miss Lucille just said thanks in advance, Dr. Liz, for sharing your knowledge. That's great. That's great. She she gave a comment there. That is awesome. That is awesome. So here we go. Now you're nationally known. There it is. There's a comment. There it is. She just wanted to share that. Well, awesome. Thanks, Lucille. Um now, you're nationally known for performing UFE, all right? That's a yeah. procedure. It's uterine fibroid embolization procedure. What yeah. are fibroids? Let's just start there. What are yeah. fibroids? Let's fibroids please, are because the most people may not know. Yeah, that's true. Fibroids are the most common pelvic tumor seen in women. Mm -hmm. um, it's present in a lot of women, but it's particularly common in African-American women, up to okay. 80%. 80% of African-American women have these benign tumors and okay. they, can, they can cause a lot of misery. It's the most common reason why women have heavy periods. So uh -huh. that's often the first presentation of, of a fibroid. Um, they can cause pain. They can cause urinary frequency, um, wow. painful intercourse, constipation. But the big three symptoms are heavy periods, pelvic pain, and increased urinary frequency. Okay, those are the three things. Okay, wow. So that's what fibroids are. Now, how does a woman know she has them? Uh, it's just through the three things you said, a heavy, heavy cycle, yeah, pain. They, okay. So now that's sometimes, women can, sometimes women can bleed heavily and not realize that's not normal. You know, oh. and, and so they'll bleed heavily and they'll do it for such a long time. They think it's, well, I'm getting older. This is my new normal or they reach out to their mom and the mom was the same way. And she's like, well, that's just that's how, how we bleed. Is. We're heavy bleeders. No, oh, that's wow. not normal. If you're, okay. if you're changing pads more frequently than every three or four hours, or if you have to do two at a time, or, or if you get accidents in blood or passing clots, um, wow. those things are not normal. Um, they need to be looked into and you should check with you know your gynecologist, mm -hmm. or if you know you have fibroids, check in with someone that can do the UFE procedure, like myself. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to know. I hope this information is good. And again, those that are here live right now, getting this information, I hope you're writing it down. Uh, and those that get it in the replay, please write it down. John's information is going across the screen. If you have any questions, he will take time to just, just give you a consult. Tell you know, get you in, talk about it. Believe you me, we don't want you to be out of here being uncomfortable for a week, a week and a half or whatever is going on when you can actually take care of it. So that's great. Let me ask this question. Do you uh, do you have to, in order to remove it, I mean, is that like a hysterectomy or something or? Yeah, if you, the gynecologist, if you see your gynecologist, often they'll, they may start you say on some medicines, but the medical therapy for fibroids is, is not very good. Um, okay. That might buy them some time. A mm -hmm. lot of times patients, as they say, they're bleeding so heavily, that's called an anemia when your blood count is low. And anemia, it, uh -huh. it causes a lot of clinical symptoms. So if you're, okay. some of the things, some of the clinical signs of anemia might be you're really tired and weak. Um, you might be lightheaded or dizzy. You might get migraine-like headaches. Um, 
You might chew or crave ice. That's a big one. Um, uh -oh. so there, there are a lot of these clinical signs that you might be anemic. And then the, the doctor will investigate how are your periods heavy? And if so, you're, you're doing this month after month. So you run this deficit of iron and hemoglobin. Um, and they'll first might try to replace the iron, but iron is very poorly absorbed. It's hard to replace, particularly if you're bleeding very heavy with these big clots and so forth. Um, so they might try birth control. That's a, a, a simple measure that will lighten the flow but unfortunately, it's kind of a double-edged sword because if fibroids are the problem, fibroids grow, we don't know where they come from, but they grow with estrogen. So estrogen is in birth control. So while on the one hand, your periods might lighten for a little while, in the background, these fibroids are growing and uh, eventually it'll overwhelm the ability for the birth control to work. And so for the gynecologist, oftentimes the next stage is surgical therapy, either cutting out some of the fibroids, that's called a myomectomy, or cutting out the uterus, that's a hysterectomy. And the procedure that we do is completely non-surgical and outpatient called UFE. So there's no surgery whatsoever. The problem largely is unfortunately, the gynecologists often don't mention that procedure to patients. Wow, what, they don't even mention it? Oh guys, and I wanna ask you, how is that performed? How do you, yeah, how, it, is that, how is that done? They don't even mention it. They don't mention Ooh. it because it's completely non-surgical. So there's no <laughs> surgery whatsoever. It's wow. outpatient. Um, patients will drive to our center in the morning. Uh -huh. The procedure takes me about 30 to 40 minutes. They sleep through it, but they're not put to sleep. No general anesthesia. It's very nice. Um, after the procedure, they recover for a few hours and go home literally with just a Band-Aid. That's wow. it. No surgery. They leave with their uterus also. Um, we, <laughs> Hallelujah. We do everything from the inside. So all we have to do is we, we get a little tiny catheter inside. We go at the top of the right leg. Um, and that's our entry point into the body. And I can steer this little tiny catheter. It's like mm -hmm. the size of a piece of spaghetti mm -hmm. under x-ray into each uterine artery separately. There's a uterine artery on each side of the uterus, and each of them branch like a tree, getting oh. smaller and smaller branches till you get out uh -huh. to the leaves. The fibroids are the leaves of the tree, and I know what size those tiny branches are, and I can plug them up, and without a blood supply, all the fibroids yeah. will die from the inside. And as they die, they will soften and shrink, like going from grapes to raisins. And okay. as that occurs, a woman's symptoms go away entirely. Oh, wow. That is, that's cool. That, so she is, gets, that is neat. She gets the relief of symptoms that she's looking for. That's really good. She avoids the risks and long recovery of an operation because with surgery, you might be out of work for two months. And mm -hmm. you're not, not only that, you're in the hospital, which nobody wants to be anywhere near a hospital these days. Nobody um, wants to. And it's much safer than surgery. It's much less invasive, much shorter recovery. And importantly, mm -hmm. and this is something unappreciated by a lot of physicians. Women get to keep their uterus. There's no reason a woman needs to lose her uterus over benign fibroids. These are not cancer. They don't oh, wow. Cancer. So that, oh, wow. So that's probably women out here that didn't even need to do all that. The Ugh. hysterectomy for fibroids is completely unnecessary. It's the second most common surgery done in the United States, which is kind of surprising because half wow. the population doesn't even have a uterus, men. Oh man, that's something. It's the second I'm, I'm most looking for some surgery questions. we do. Okay, the well, we put on the reason chat. is these fibroids. Mm -hmm. The average no. age of the hysterectomy is less than 40. And I've met way too many women less than 30 have already had a hysterectomy oh. for fibroids. It's tragic. I have I have daughters that age. Wow. Well, I, I was just saying that. Please, guys, if you have some questions, put it in the chat. I mean, Dr. Littman is here. You know, if you know someone and you just want to know a little more, this is your opportunity. This, these are facts he's given us. He's given us facts right now. And this is great, John, because again, a lot of people probably still don't even know that they don't have to worry about having to go in and do rip all this out. They can still kind of Not feel, you, you know, can keep all right. your parts. And, and it's important because hysterectomy see. has consequences for women. 
So when you wow. lose your uterus, there's a lot of women that struggle psychologically, like a man being castrated. There's a lot of oh. sexual dysfunction. I mean, you know, 40 is the new 30. So, I mean, you know, you don't want to be having any kind of sexual dysfunction and, and they're unaware of it. It's, it's really tragic. Um, we know that the hysterectomy causes a lot of bone loss. There's a lot of urinary leaking. If you oh, go into Kroger, wow. go, go anywhere where there's a pharmacy, either like a, you know, a CVS, a Walgreens, a Kroger, mm -hmm. Publix, and you go to the adult diaper section, you don't see a picture of grandma and grandpa in the adult diapers. You no. see typically an, an attractive 35 to 40 year old black woman. That's because hysterectomies are done in primarily women of color. And one of the many side effects of a hysterectomy is this urinary leaking. And it's just unnecessary. We don't need to do this. Oh my goodness, John. That is, that's something. That is something. I think we have a question. Uh, Sabrina, sure. there's a question in there, I, I think in the chat for Dr. Littman. Can we get that up? Okay. So Dr. Oh. Lucille says, after the procedure, will fibers ever grow back again? That's a great question. Um, typically not because, a, and, and if you're over 40, when you get the UFE procedure um, and you knock out all the fibroids, it takes a long time. Now, occasionally we'll see someone grow some new fibroids, but usually it's somebody we've seen, say in their 30s, now they're in their mid to late 40s or early 50s, and they actually did grow some new fibroids. But I'll tell you, that's the Achilles heel of the myomectomy. The myomectomy mm -hmm. surgery, they can never get them all out surgically. So they okay. go in, they take the bigger ones surgically, and they leave behind a whole host of other fibroids that will grow. Oh, wow. And within five years, they'll need another something. And sometimes within two or three years. So myomectomy mm -hmm. commonly recurs, whereas UFE knocks them all out and very rarely recurs. So wow. I, I, I saw two patients today that had multiple myomectomies because they'll keep doing myomectomies until the woman says, okay, I'm not interested in fertility, take my uterus. Okay, wow. They, they should have known about UFE, but very few people know about it. Now you can do one myomectomy, but in my opinion, there never ever should be more than one. The next time should always be UFE, but maybe even the first time, but certainly no more than one myomectomy. Wow, this is great, John. You are giving some good information for these women, these women that are active on the move, trying to get it done. Because again, if you're out here and you're trying to, to run your business or you're doing the activities with your children or you're just, just you know, right now the, the, we're open, right? They, they say we're getting open. Everyone's getting their vaccines, doing this and that, and they're trying to get going. They want to, you know, it's probably, this is like an inconvenience because it's like you're trying oh. to get out here and then this happens. People so, that are struggling with fibroids yes. they often have really heavy periods, as I mentioned. And the uh -huh. periods being just so outrageously heavy, it yeah, affects you can't everything in their life. Everything. Yeah. They can't work, maybe. Uh, they can't uh. swim. They can't be social. They're so afraid of the accidents in blood. It's embarrassing. I mean, so they, they don't go out in public. They, don't, they may not work. Everything is tied oh, around wow. the menstrual. They have to have extra clothing. They have to know where every bathroom is. Um, it's, it's, it's very um, we disturbing. have more questions. We got another question, oh, John. Okay. Look what we have. And I want to tell you guys, you know, thanks to Sabrina in the back, backstage, making sure, powering us up, getting things going. All right, here's a question. Oh, great one. Yeah, this is a great question. Wow, you have a thanks, really Natasha. smart audience. Um, yes, there is fertility possible. I've had numerous children born after UFE, I've had multiple sets of twins. Um, UFE, wow. our birth. Our births after a UFE are typically full term and vaginal, whereas if you have a surgical myomectomy, they won't let you have a vaginal birth. You must have more surgery, a C-section. So there oh, are big differences. Oh, I, think, oh, I heard somebody two. say that. Okay. Wow. Okay. We have another question in the in the chat here. Let's let's get them in. Here we go. All right. Oh. I think we know her. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Shayla Weaver. She's a uh, uh, she's a great, we just recently hired her. She's phenomenal. She's our nurse practitioner. She's uh -huh. a wonderful addition to our Atlanta Fibroid Center team. Um, I can't say enough great things about her. It was, a, it was we really appreciate all she does for us. And Oh, that's um, great. Thank that's, you, Janie nice. Littman. 
Yeah, your wife said, look, we got to mention our new addition. I remember when you guys Absolutely. were bringing her on. That's right. I remember. I remember when you guys were bringing her on. These have been some great questions. Anything in particular you want to tell? Let me ask this question. With the with you know with the vaccines and everything that's going on, we know that Johnson and Johnson just had to put a pause because they were there were blood clots and different things were going on. Yeah. Do you think that's because of what you know? What what do you think is causing these? Well, these it's not a very high rate, but it's certainly something that we need to investigate. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems that it uh, particularly involves women, uh, mm -hmm. um, young women, um, and not really sure why that is. That but it is giving everyone pause and we've got to kind of look at it because, um, you know, frankly, while we had the platform for the vaccine, we didn't, you know, have the usual time to really, you know, study it as intently as we do other things. So, right. um, you know, now that we have something, we need to look at it um, mm -hmm. and try to get to the bottom of it because that is a serious complication. It's a, it's basically kind of a clot in the venous side of the brain, which is, obviously very serious and yeah. it seems to be wow. targeting um, young women. It's not really sure why that is, why but that is. we do need to look at that. Well, I was talking to a young lady, uh, John, and she uh, we were talking and she was mentioning something in reference to possibly birth control, but I don't understand how that would affect something. Well, birth control does increase the clot, you know, it's the thickness of the blood. It's called hypercoagulability. So um, it is a risk factor for it's a known risk factor for blood clots in the mm -hmm. on the venous side in the legs, um, mm -hmm. and so one of the one of the it's called a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis. It's a okay. blood clot in the legs, or sometimes it's in the pelvis. Um, and birth control that is a risk factor for it. Also, obesity is a risk factor. Having major surgery where you're where you're sedentary for a long period of time, uh, any any way that. If you're not moving, if you're a woman that's not on the move, you're, hey. at, risk for, you're at risk for blood clots in the vein. So we want to okay. keep moving. I got to um, stay on the move. Okay. And certainly if you're on birth control, you got to be careful about that. Smoking is another big risk factor for it. Wow. But um, hopefully wow. nobody's smoking that's on birth control. That's a that's a big no-no. Big one. Huh? Wow. This is great, John. I really appreciate the time you've taken. Um, well, I know we got a few minutes going here before we bring on our other guests. Tell, talk to us. Tell us about what you got going on, what you want people to know. Put it out there. Well, I think you, everyone that's su suffering with fibroids has to know about UFE. It's okay. one of the biggest medical breakthroughs for women. So if you're struggling with fibroids, no matter what your gynecologist may tell you, get a second opinion about uterine fibroid embolization, UFE. It's a tremendous procedure. It works over 90% of the time. It's completely non-surgical, outpatient. You get the relief of symptoms you're looking for without any surgery. You get your life back. It's transformational. Everybody, you know, you'll hear all sorts of things about, uh, we talked about fertility. Yes, you can have fertility. No, it's, you can do it on any patient. Doesn't matter how big or how many. You'll hear a lot of these myths, but go oh. see an experienced interventional radiologist like myself that can tell you if you are a candidate, likely you are. Almost every patient that's been told they need to have surgery is a is a candidate for UFE and it's covered by every insurance including Medicare and Medicaid okay and we, take, we take everything oh good oh that's good do you hear that guys they take everything yeah a lot of specialists don't take Medicaid but I think it's really important to take it it's important wow this is great John you have given a wealth of knowledge some great information for the women that are watching, men, if your wife is going through it, tell her to call Dr. Littman, Absolutely. get on the phone, email him, do whatever you need to do. His information is on the screen. You can sit, hit him up on Instagram, whatever you need to do to get that taken care of, okay? Because it is so very important. You want to make sure that you are taking care of yourselves. You gotta it's take not over. It's, you don't have to just get it, you know, tear it out and it's done and gone. And oh, then you're yeah. feeling unwhole. He can keep you whole, baby. And, and yeah. keep you moving. Got to take care of our queens. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Oh, John, you know what? This is my buddy here. But look, John, I want to just thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to put your song back on because this is your music. You, you, you told me to play this today. Yeah. Never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> That's right. And this is John's song. He plays this when he's doing surgery. 
Now, we don't do any surgery procedures now. Procedure, procedure. Oh, look, see, I'm not medical. See, look at that. Correct me. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. You have a great evening. I enjoyed you. And uh, if nobody told you I love you, I just did. Oh, have a great I one. I love you too. Thank you. It's so great to All see right. you. Bye -bye. Oh, my goodness. That was great. Having Dr. Littman on, I'm telling you. Ladies, he's giving you all the information you need to get yourself taken care of. If you if you have a heavy flow, if you're feeling uncomfortable, it's okay to get a second opinion. He's not saying don't go to your OBGYN, but give him a call. He may have something, a procedure, be able to kind of guide you along the way to, to, to just a healthier lifestyle. And um, you can get out here and be what? On the move. <laughs> all right. Up next, I have a guest for you. But before that, let's take a quick commercial break. And we'll be right back. It's not magic. Yeah, we can make things float. Make something appear out of absolutely nothing. But even the greatest magicians worked at that trick. It's not magic. It's organic. From the curl in our hair to the tip of our toes, the sway of our hips, and the joy of our smile. We give our blood, sweat, and tears to be our very best. Even when the world tells us it's never going to be enough. We got that thing. That hooping, soccer playing, game changing, oh so resilient, double A outing, butterfly stroking thing. We worked for all this. Always been a Catholic for change. You thought history just made itself? Nah, baby, this ain't magic. This, this is the real thing. As the COVID-19 vaccines become available, you might be asking yourself, should I get it? And if I do, will I be able to go about life without putting my family at risk? You've got questions, and that's normal. The fact is, the vaccines are safe and effective. They're going to save lives. To get the latest on the COVID-19 vaccines, visit GetVaccineAnswers.org. Because getting back to the moments we miss starts with getting informed. It's up to you. Hey, we're back. We're back. Yes. All right. We got through that first half hour. Yes. We are on the move. Woo. It's been a beautiful day here in Atlanta. I'm just loving it. Dr. Littman did a great job talking to us about fibroids and how we can take care of ourselves. Ladies, men, like I told you, if your wife's suffering, your girlfriend, your boo, tell them to call Dr. Littman. All right. Well, Without further ado, I'm going to introduce the next guest today. She is my sister-in-law. Now, she is just a wonderful person. She's been in doing uh, in the nursing field, the medical field for over 20 years. And I'd like to welcome her to the stage right here, right now, Shania Thomas. How you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I'm wow. good. Real good. How's, how's everything there in Orlando? Um, today it's hot. Um, <laughs> you know how Orlando is, it's hot. Um, but doing it's good, good. It's a nice day today, real nice. All right, okay, it's a nice day. Well, look, before we get started, you know, I don't I don't I don't read bios. I tell you, I, so what I want <laughs> you to do is I want you to tell us who you are, what you do, and who you do it for. All right. Well, I'm Shana Thomas. Um, I have been a nurse for over 20 years. Um, I'm also a life coach. I uh, specialize in relationships, uh, goal setting. Um, I've been kind of coined as the wife whisperer because I did. Um, I speak into wives um, and married minded women, women that are thinking about being married. So I do uh, kind of dibble in that a little bit. Um, and recently, since we've had the COVID outburst and everything, I've been more of a health coach. So when uh, COVID first started and everybody kind of wanted to know, should we, this is before we started, uh, everybody started wearing masks. I don't know if you remember in the beginning, they said, no, don't wear masks. You don't need to wear a mask out. That seems so crazy now. But in the beginning, they were like, no, save the masks, you know, for the for the people in the hospitals. So um, at the time, I was kind of telling people, you know, maybe, you know, what the CDC was saying, don't wear the mask, but then we couldn't find any masks. So then we were uh, making them at home. 
And so then as time went on, we started talking about wearing the importance of wearing masks. And now we're on to the vaccines. So um, anytime I can get on a platform and, and educate our community, um, I'm all for it. So I'm, I'm doing that. And then I'm also have a book coming up later on when we talk about that. Um, and it's, it's all kinds of stuff going on. God has been real good, real good. Awesome. Awesome, sis. That is great. Well, you've been in the health care industry for over 20 years, like I said. So right. you, 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 you know, you consider yourself an expert. Now, what area, where is your expertise at in nursing, in the health? Um, my expertise is in long-term care. So that's usually the nursing home spectrum. Okay. Um, and so I've done pretty much all of my 20 years in that. And I've done that in pretty much everything in a nursing home that a nurse could do in a nursing home I have. So currently I'm the director of um, a facility um, in Kissimmee, um, Florida, near Kissimmee, Florida. Yeah, they, no, and they say, they call it kissing, no, kissing me, not Kissimmee. Kissimmee. We call it Kissimmee. Kissimmee. They say Kissimmee. <laughs> we call it Kissimmee. They call it Kissimmee. So yes. it's, it's over there in, in um, Osceola County. So, yes, um, yes. so I, so I'm, I'm over there. And so I'm the director over a 120 bed facility. And, right. um, so as you know, with COVID, there were so in the beginning, it yes. was a lot of people in nursing homes and long-term care um, facilities that, were stricken with that. So we had to learn quickly um, how to keep everybody contained. And I know there were issues with people wanting to see their loved ones. And yes. um, now we're just getting to the point where we're starting to slowly open up, but okay. very cautiously, very cautiously. How did you guys handle that though? When, when it came, how did you handle it? I mean, did you guys get hit really hard when COVID came along? How, did, you know, tell me like, did you guys have to, cause we saw on the news, people had to like stay in the nurses and everybody just stay there. How did you guys uh, work it out? Um, for us, we've been real blessed. Our facility, we were, I, I said, I don't know. I, I mean, I came in kind of like right in the dead center of the COVID, everything going crazy. Okay. I came in um, in June. I started working there in June. So okay. the, the first craziness was already over. But at that time when I started, they had no cases. No, which, like, which was like unheard of. Then when I started coming, when I got there, probably within... I want to say maybe 90 days after I got there, we got our first case. And so we kept calling them pop-ups. So we'd have one pop-up here and they'd have a case and another one. And so okay. we never had anything really um, over. I think the most we had at one time and we just kept them all together um, okay. in a, like a wing. Um, okay. I think the most we had was about eight at one time. And then after that, they went through their period um, of, you know, you know, taking care of them. We had a closed uh -huh. unit took care of them. And then we closed that unit and that was it. So we really um, contributed that the success of that for we were, I mean, hand washing you, everybody had to wear a mask. The residents, unfortunately, they couldn't go out and mingle like they normally would. Yeah. Do. Oh, and I know that was hard. It was very difficult, but we oh. knew we did it for safety. Um, the re the family members, they did a lot of, uh, um, visiting at the window and phone visits and video calls and things oh, of that nature. That's good. So but that's we were great. very, very, yeah, we fortunate. were very, very, yeah, fortunate. That is yeah. good. That is that is amazing. And and let me ask you, you know, about the vaccines because we have the three. We got the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson and Johnson. So we know the Johnson and Johnson just put a pause on it. They're trying to figure it out. You mm -hmm. know. Um, we really don't know. I mean, you know, we're kind of trying to, we're just waiting to hear. I mean, being in the medical field, does anything come across your, you know, your desk in reference to the Johnson Johnson or it's just like, hey, we just got to wait? Yeah, they, they just got to wait on it. Um, When we started, um, when we started the vaccines, we were blessed because we were one of the first facilities in um, pretty much central Florida to start uh -huh. giving out vaccines to our residents if they were available. And that was okay. in December. So we got the first leg of it when people were like, oh, I don't know if I want to do the vaccine or not. I don't know if I want to do it. So we were at that point where we were like, OK, well, I know I was anyway. I was like, I don't I need to get this done because I need to protect myself and my family. Um, yeah. So I, I got it done. And I think the first for our facility was uh, December 26th. And then oh. the second one was in January. So okay, we got okay. done completely. What did you guys so do? Which, which we one? Had the Pfizer. We had the Pfizer. Okay. 
Okay. And um, just recently, we had a physician that was in the um, community and he offered, I guess he was able to get some Moderna vaccines for some of our other residents who maybe changed their mind since January and decided to okay. do it. So I think we last week that was Moderna and we had 30 yeah. residents who got vaccinated with Moderna. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's, uh, all right. So look guys, if you have any questions, uh, we have an expert here. She is an expert in the medical profession. I'm trying to see, I think I'm getting some questions. How, how, why are people sending me questions through the phone and not on, on the line? <laughs> on the line? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, we'll just, we'll just keep it moving. We won't worry about that. Put it in the <laughs> chat guys, put it in the chat. So what, I mean, okay. So you guys started with the Pfizer. You, someone mm -hmm. came in into your area, in your facility, they started doing the Moderna at your right, location. Right. Okay. Right. So you guys never got the J&J. &J. We never got the J&J. &J. I think because okay. that was, um, and I actually have not heard any other long-term care facility doing J&J. &J. I think that was just because in the beginning they were doing Pfizer. That was the first one that was our That's true. true. Mm -hmm. That's and what I did. Yeah. And since long-term care facilities were such at a top list that they wanted to get mm -hmm especially in Florida, they wanted us to become vaccinated as much as possible that they went ahead and just gave, you know, gave us Pfizer, um, the Pfizer. Right, just um, went out. Yeah, mm -hmm. just went, did, and they came, like some facilities had strike teams where they just kind of came through the facility and just were just um, giving them the vaccine. So okay. it was a pretty good place, but we've never had to, um, no one has ever come to us for the Johnson & Johnson. Let, yeah. let's 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 clear up some of the myths i mean do you i mean it, it is safe i mean they i know mm -hmm. that people are concerned that it, it went quickly but mm -hmm. from your from your standpoint um you know being an expert in the medical field i mean mm -hmm. how do you what 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 can we say or what can you say to ease the minds of people within our community that are still like oh no now that this didn't happen they like oh no, oh, no. is there anything no, no. that we could say to, to ease their mind that um, with the vaccines? Well, I, I do know that before everything was approved and I know things were, um, they had the emergency approval at first. Right. Um, I always look at anything. I, 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 I do two things. I always pray about it and I always do my research. So okay. I always look and see what, um, I know they've done testing you know, millions right. of people have done testing even before we even said we were going to get this emergency. OK, you know, yes. for the general public. And uh -huh. I look at the pros and I look at the pros and the cons. The mm -hmm. I mean, if we get covid, that is a gamble for some people that are healthy. They go down quick. There have been people that are on ventilators, never had any type of comorbidities before. And they're, uh, you know, fighting for their life. Wow. And um, and then there's some people that have it and go through them like water. It's a gamble. It and, is a gamble. Um, You're right. It's a gamble and you just don't know. And I just felt like I didn't want to take that risk. Right. Um, it's it's an it's pretty much of an you you don't see it you don't know you we go everywhere we go to the store we go we go to our friend's house we go to church we go all these different places we don't need you can't even pinpoint where you where you would have gotten it from. You know, unless yeah. you are sharing a household with people and you know that they have it, then you can say, okay, well, I got it from that person. Yeah, for, right, or something right. like that. Okay, I, because like, and like you were just saying, you have some people that that are healthy and then they have to go in the hospital to get on a ventilator and then you have some people, like they just stay home for 14 days. I mean, what is the what is the 14 day rule thing? Because it's like, okay, you know, you've been around somebody and they say, okay, stay out for 14 days and then you can go out. I mean, <laughs> but what, I, I, I mean, come on now. I mean, so if I go around this person, I got to come back in for 14 days and I can go out. I, I don't right. get the 14 day rule. Is it just that within 14 days, what, what, can, what's the 14 day? It, it can incubate. So I guess <laughs> when, it, when it comes in, if someone has the virus, let's say, and then by the time they actually have symptoms, you could have already passed it around to someone. So they say if, if let's say I had a friend and I'm talking to them and they have COVID okay. and then, OK, now I have to stay in 14 days. That's going to give me time for any type of antibodies come in my system to get through. And then either I have it or I don't, you know, and for it to pass by. I think now they're kind of lessening it to like 10 days. But oh. it, 14 days is the, the quarantine period. That's the best way to, to be. OK, because so, I don't. I, 
Okay, because I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, so how do you know if you if it's gone? I mean, you know for a fact that you 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 you've been around somebody, you get home, you stay home, you don't have any symptoms, you're okay. You had right. you, you lost 14 days of pay for some people, right? <laughs> and go back to work. And mm-hmm. how you know, I mean, hello. So I that's right. what that was my that's what I was because I've had friends that have gotten the the um COVID and mm-hmm. They were home for 14 days. They felt bad, but then they, they, they said they felt real weighted and tired or something mm-hmm. like that. And they stayed home and then they got a negative test and they waited mm-hmm. to the end of 14 days. They just went back to work. So I'm like, okay. Right. And then I've had some people that, you know, they were sick. They kind of felt like they had a cold or flu that went into the hospital and it just was a tragic situation. And I mean, right. it was like crazy. And I'm like, I don't understand. Uh, I, I just, it's, cra- so it's crazy. I, it was, so for me, and I, I mean, right. and this is just for my opinion, for those who are watching, uh, look, we could, I mean, take, if the vaccine can help get some of that stuff away, then let's, let's do it. So we got some questions coming in, in the chat and the live. So I want to get them in. Hey, Priscilla. Oh, I haven't seen her so long. She's, so you see the question? 14 days, mm-hmm. but you're supposed to retest before you go back to work. Okay. So you stay on for 14 days. But okay, okay, okay. I would, I would say the fourteen days. I mean, if you can get test now, they're getting ready to. I mean, let's say if it's just that one person, you didn't go anywhere else. It was one person who you were exposed to. Yeah, and then you stay home for fourteen days. Let's just say right. all. I mean, when you're quarantined, you really should not be in quarantine. You should really be in quarantine and not be around the people in your house. Because right. I have a house full of people. I have one, two, three, three. It's four of us. It's four of us. So what if we're I'm home, but I'm in quarantine, but my husband okay. is going in and out of work. So he's oh. out. Of so, so you, you gotta, gotta take a done. test. So what Priscilla is saying, take you gotta take a test and get a positive re- a test before you you gotta make sure. So what if you get a test and it's negative? You still gotta stay on for 14 days, all right. I would, yeah, and, and it depends on the policy. It of may pop up later. Your work for it, your workplace, yeah. Okay. I mean, all for, right, yeah. So, you know, okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking the questions. I'm, you know, <laughs> right. I'm asking dumb questions. I'm gonna ask the dumb. I'm, I'm gonna ask the dumb questions, y'all, because I just want to know. There is no dumb. No dumb. There's no questions. dumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no Listen, dumb I, I got my first shot. I got the Pfizer. My second one is next week. This week, right. yeah, next week I get my second one. Um, right. Now, a lot of people say that they seem to get uneasy after the second shot. Some people are just, why Why is that? Because you have to think about the purpose of the, sh- of, of the vaccine. So the okay. first vaccine, and I think it's the same dose, first or second. But when you get your first one, it's okay. your initial one. But the second one, it, it's supposed to boost those antibodies. So okay. when people wait, say, wait, wait, oh, hold, on, hold on, you're going too fast for me. <laughs> okay, hold on. The first one, what are they putting in me on the first one? The first one is, I mean, it's it's the vaccine. So it's, it's, um, it, it, they put the COVID in me? No, 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 no. Oh, it's not, it's oh okay. Not, the vaccine. No, okay. No, no. To, to prevent it. Okay. I'm going to make sure. Right, to, pre- to prevent it. So, you know, you're, I mean, without going into all science lingo, you're, you're, you're okay. um, it has something in your, the vaccine contains something. So it kind of mimics what a, what COVID would do, but it's not COVID. Okay. All and right. so what it does is that it, tr- it it tricks your body into almost like it has COVID and it fights those antibodies because right like now, the first one, one. Right, well, both of them, both of them. Oh, okay. But the reason between the first and the second is almost like the flu. It's not a, and people are um, getting this all mixed on, mixed up. So like if they get the second one and they say, I feel sick after the second one, that's a side effect. That's not a side effect. That is your body reacting to the vaccine, which is what it's supposed to do. Oh, so, so, y'all get that? Oh, okay. So, okay. When, so for instance, when we get the flu, when we have the flu, not not the flu shot, but when we have the, the real flu, what do we do? We have sweats. We have we some chills. Tea. I want some broth. I want y'all yeah. leave me alone. You want, you want to leave, be left alone. You have all those things because your body is reacting to that. Your fever is a reaction of what your body's doing on the inside, your antibodies. So okay. that's okay. all that is. Your, okay. your, so the second shot, if they get, it's not... It's it's just it's it's just a reacting to the to the boost. Right now, right, what about yeah. people that don't get it? We got a lady. I think we got a comment here. This young lady. Let's see her comment. Uh, she says that uh, she had both of them, no side effects. 
at a second dose and she still feels so oh thank you jesus Amen. that's right girl. give it to the lord <laughs> give it to the lord give it to the lord so <laughs> so um so some people will have the second shot and don't and everything's good right does that right. mean that they 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 that, what does that mean because they got the boost that, now it just means that your body works differently i have um i i have one of those I don't get sick very often. Thank you, right. Lord. I, so the flus and things like that, I don't, mm. I guess I just have a good immune system. So okay. when I took the second shot, I had coworkers. It was all of us. We took it the same day. About three of my coworkers, they felt bad the next day. That Sunday, it was a Sunday. That next day, they they said they had a little temp. They felt sick on oh, the stomach. Wow. Um, and but it only lasted for the day. They said at the end of that day, they felt great. They felt like everything was fine. I felt fine. I, I mean, I okay. went to church. I came home. I think I took a nap. And I and then, of okay. course, you know, we get hypochondriac. So I said, well, maybe I was reacting from I was just probably. OK. Sleeping. All <laughs> right. Now we have another question uh, here. Let's see. Uh, in the chat here, let's get another one in. All right. So Miss Betty said side effects from the second shot. She was down for two days. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Miss Betty was down. Yeah. Oh, Miss Betty. That, that so she said it wasn't a side. Was, was it a side effect or just a reaction? You said it's it, it's. I, I I wouldn't. I think a reaction, a, re, a real severe reaction, would be a, a a reaction like you can't breathe. You you know. Oh, a okay. Reaction. Okay. But but those um on the second shot they say to kind of expect those. So if you don't have it, awesome. Ama that's okay. wonderful. All right. well, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let y'all yeah. know because uh, I got something to do today the next day after because I got to eat. So look. I tell people take a little Tylenol. You know, well, the why not? I don't use Tylenol. I do a leave. Why can't I take a leave? That lady said no a leave. Why? She said no a What's leave? in it? She told me, at, yeah, when I went to Delta to get my Pfizer, I said I don't have to, um, Tama, I had to leave. I had the little thing in my purse. Well, she said, "Don't take it." Hmm. Probably I don't know. So. Makeup in that, yeah. But well, everybody I mean, said Tylenol. Everybody, and I don't know what happened with Tylenol. And I stopped. I just said I'm boycotting them. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but uh, I'm I, I'm hope. I, I guess I'm gonna have to break down. See, and I'm gonna blame it on the Tylenol. See, I'm gonna be like, nope, it wasn't the Pfizer. <laughs> it was the Tylenol. <laughs> it was the Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But look, tell us, tell, before we go, I want you to tell us a little bit about um, your book, what you have coming. You got a book coming out this summer. Yeah. Uh, I got another lady in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, green room. She waiting to come up. She's going to share with us. But go ahead, because, you know, we can get this book. We are women <laughs> on the move. This is our time. That's tell right. us about your book. So the book is, um, it's a book that's been the years in the making, but it's called Seven Day Jumpstart, Facing Your Fears and Embracing Your Destiny. And basically it is a small book, but it is so powerful because I think any dream, any goal, any desire that you have in life, it only requires, it requires you just to take that first jump. So many okay. people are so scared. They're so scared to take that first move, that first step, that first jump. And, and it's, it's broad based. So about a okay. goal, it could be about weight loss. It could be about, you know, whatever it is in, in your life. So it's an oh. interactive book. So I'm I'm excited about that. I'm on the finishing wow. touches of that. Um, and I hope to have that out probably pre-summerish. So I'm excited okay. about that. All right. And author to your name. Okay. Yes. The wife <laughs> Tell them about the wife's wife whisper and how they can be a part of being the Wh whispering wives, girl. I don't know why that got a whisper. What's going on with that? Oh, wait, before you answer that, we had another another uh comment that came up. Uh let's let's get that on the screen. Uh oh, Lucille, thank you for explaining. Oh, look at that, breaking it down, oh, making thank it simple. You so much. Oh, it's congratulations on your book. Look at that. Thank All you. right. All right. Now, Priscilla said, please get the vaccine, folks. I work in the fire department training division. Look, okay, that's right. Get your vaccines. Please. Thank you, Priscilla. That's right. Get your vaccine. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what yes. we have to do. All right. Miss Miss Tarpley Shaw said, Yay. That's yes. all right. But so tell us about the whispers. The yes. whisperers. Whisper. So I, I we got a whisper. I ain't a white, but why they got a whisper? <laughs> so that, that's my auntie. She's my hype girl. She's my hype girl. Oh, hey, her. Auntie. Oh, all right. Um uh, years ago, I always needed. I wish I had a wife whisper for me. This your brother. Okay. It's all right. Um, okay. But to, to, with being married is hard. It's hard work. And yeah. so I, I had other friends that said, you know, what about this? Or what about communication? Or what about this? And so I ended up having a community of wives and other women that, you know, had fiancés and just 
things, you know, little things. It's like, okay, okay. Don't, don't don't kill your husband tonight. It's all right, you know. Okay. <laughs> Pray over him, you know, talk to him. Let's try again tomorrow. Let's, you know. So I always had like good encouragement for wives and it and it always stuck. So I always kind of was coined the wife whisperer. Um, I still do Aww. that. Um, anytime when people need a little bit of, you know, good girlfriend, sister, auntie advice, I'm always oh, that's there. Good. So. Oh, and we need that. We need support. I mean, I didn't have a whisperer when I was married. Right. I don't know when she would have said nothing that would have stopped me, but, you know. <laughs> I'm out, boo. Deuces. <laughs> but I got married young, so you know what? We're cool. We're friends. We are right. good. We are good co Well, co-parenting, Chuck. Them jokes. They sure but anyway, <laughs> um, you know, but but it's good that that's that you do that because a lot of people don't understand, you know, you're going to argue, you're going to have differences and people right. are so quick to throw in the towel. Oh, I'm done. Absolutely. You're going to get with somebody else. Y'all going to have a disagreement and hello. The same issue. And you could If you yeah, don't change so this right here, if you don't change this about you and how you handle things, those things are going to last to the next relationship. To the that's next right. It's going to keep rolling right on. you going to why are this always them? No, but it's you. It's you. It's you. <laughs> look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Okay. So, well, look, Shana, I thank you so much. This was great. You gave some great information, some good points. I'm so glad, you know, I was able to have you on to kind of clear up maybe some of the myths so people would know, look, this is what you need to do. You got to do. I want you here. Okay. Right. We need you. We to need you. Here so we can continue to enjoy life right. and live it to the fullest. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So uh, again, you know, thanks, sis. Um, Thank you. I guess we'll talk soon. Yes. Anything else you want to say before we get you going on here? No, just um, just do the vaccine. You know, if, if you have the opportunity to get it, get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, sis. Thank All right. You. See you later. Oh, uh, <laughs> guys, this was great. This has been, uh, I mean, tonight is just awesome. We're just rolling, but I got one more guest. How about that? Hey, hey. That's right. I have another guest. She'll be right up. I'm going to take a quick commercial break and I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Listen, guys, if you want to sponsor and be a sponsor to get your advertisement right here during this time, as you can see, we start off with a video. We got videos in between. If you want to be a sponsor for Women on the Move Live, please email me, Kim at McNairProductions.com. If you have questions about it, anything, please reach out to me. Let me know. This platform is for women who are in business, about business, and ready to do business. We are live. As you can see, we have an interactive chat. People are chiming in, talking, asking questions, being involved with what we're doing. Not only that, we're streaming all over the world. That's right. Everywhere. You can tune in and be a part of it live through Facebook, or through YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, please, so you'll know you'll get the alerts. Make sure you go to Kim McNair Productions, uh, Kim McNair Productions on Facebook and like our page. Go to Women on the Move TV with Kim McNair. Like our page so you can get the alerts so you'll know what we're doing when we're coming on. You know, I come on every Tuesday morning. I do virtual coffee with Dr. Kim in the virtual cafe. That's right. And we touch and agree virtually each and every Tuesday morning. That's Yes, we do. So I'm just trying to tell you things and try to get you guys to stay connected with me and the things that are going on in our community. As you can see, I'm talking to people everywhere. They don't have to be in Atlanta. They can be, you know, in Chicago, in Denver, anywhere. They can be in the UK. It does not even matter because why? We are streaming live. That's right. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my next guest, She's a sister friend. We met some time ago. We met at a conference. She is a lovely young lady. You guys know I don't read bios. I'm going to let her introduce herself. Welcome, Miss Dawn Sturgill Moore. Hey, Dawn. Hey there, sister friend. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? I am doing very well. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me today. Oh, I'm so glad you had time to jump on in here with us. Uh, I said, I, I got to get you on. I'm doing some great things with you. But look, before we talk about that, 
Tell us who you are, what you do, and who you do it for. All right. Well, my name is Dawn Stargell Moore. And while you see CEO and founder of More to Life Consultants, I am a, a executive uh, with an organization that does great things with digital transformation. I'm also in academics, um, but I'm here today to talk more about my coaching and consulting business called More to Life Consultants. Um, this is a, a, a baby that is near and dear to me. This is my lifeblood. Um, I have been in business now for two years. This has been where my passion and my purpose have aligned, and this is the optimal career career development organization. So we do executive career and, um, and individual coaching. So again, I'm excited to be here. And, and, and we're going to talk about one of the things that you and I are collaborating on. So I'm just that's excited. right. Yes. Collaboration. That is my look. That is my 2021 collaboration. People don't realize. Look, look, we ain't going to do it by ourselves. No, we're going to collaborate so we can celebrate, be successful and be what? On the move. Yes. On the move. <laughs> on the move. That's great, Dawn. I mean, some things. And I had a I, I got a. Um, uh, 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 okay, a DM or a message, you know, they, they're hitting you up every which way. And I think we have a friend uh, and I didn't know that she knew you. And, I, you know, you always, it's like, who, it's, who do you know? And I was like, Sybil was, I said, Sybil's like, Sybil. I was like, you know, oh my goodness. It's a small world. It's a small world. Yes. But you, you travel with some powerful women, women that make an impact. So it's not a surprise that we've got folks in common that know each other. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you know what? Hey, it's, it's all good. And, and again, my platform is your platform. That's why I do what I do for women who need to be able to get out and let people know what they're doing, how they're mm -hmm. doing. And, um, you know, you just need that interaction. You need to be able to, because there's so many things that's going on around us, right? We've all been shut in. Most people are now we're opening up. We're getting out. People have come up with new ideas, new innovative mm -hmm. ways to do things. Well, they need to let people know. Yes, we have social media. We're doing social media, but now we have this. We 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 have, we can stream. We can talk to people everywhere, and people can service people everywhere. everywhere. And you that know, is even with what you're doing. Talk Absolutely. about that. And that's the beauty of what I do. So my team not only does um, executive career and life coaching, we offer leadership assessments. Uh, we do webinars in which we offer um, modular workshops that we do for organizations. We also do individual coaching. So to your point, there is no reason that you cannot get the support that you need, especially in the pandemic. And right now, um, I have had to change the way I do business because I typically would go on site and do even speaking engagements. But Mm -hmm. Again, we can do that via Zoom. So it's a beautiful platform yes. and a different way to do things. Um, as you think about it, people are looking for hope. They're looking for an avenue to understand how to do things differently. And as you look at what's available to us right now, um, the coaching space has been just beautiful because I have always enjoyed helping people and working with them and helping them align their passion and purpose. So as I have an opportunity, I'm blessed to have people that are saying they need this assistance. It's all about finding out what's going to work for them, making sure they've got the tools and the resources to begin to walk in their purpose. And that's what gets me up and that's what gives me joy each and every day. So I just wow. appreciate it. The platform oh, and the opportunity, yes. Yeah, but you know what? People need to know that because a lot you hear that a lot. What's your purpose? So what's your purpose? You know, and you need to know what your purpose is. You need to kind of know the direction you're going. Because if you don't know your purpose, you're just out here doing right. things, you know, doing this, you're doing that, and you're not putting any purpose into it. You know, you need to do it purposely. You need to be intentional, right? You need to be authentic with what you're doing. And you can give it your all when you have clarity. Absolutely. And, you know, ultimately, whenever we think about those things and we determine or begin to think about where purpose comes from, it's those things that we have been doing all of our lives that we have not tapped into. So we've got convergence experiences that have shaped us and who we are today. And as we think about those transformational moments, things that have been brought to our attention, either through our friends, our co-workers, or what mm -hmm. God has even imparted in us, Amen. lead us to define where we are and helping us to discover that. So we all have dreams. We all understand those dreams. We all mm -hmm. understand those things that you know are pressing to us. But we got to do more than just dream. We got to take that dream and we got to put it on paper. We got to write the vision. We got to make it plain. 
we have to start writing down some of those things that are motivating us, that are bringing us passion. And then yes. from there, we got to create a plan and we got to execute against that plan. So oh, those are the things the that our folks, we, we got to start doing, and that becomes our reality, especially in the pandemic. And if yes. we're not tapping into us during this particular time, and if we're not learning and uncovering who we are in this moment, then we've missed a moment during this pandemic. So wow. I'm here that to help, perfect. I'm here to support, and my organization is, is ready to lend that support. Wow. Okay. We got a comment there. What she said. What, 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 let's see what she got in the comments here. What we have. Sabrina says, write the vision and make it plain. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. That's right. And it's right there. It's in the Bible. I tell you, know, I, I'm a virtual, I did my virtual coffee this morning and I talked about the three, th three things, which was mm -hmm. Um, it's pursuing God. You know, you got to pursue God. You out here, you're pursuing this job. You're pursuing that man, that man pursuing you. You're pursuing all these things, right? You're trying to chase that dollar, but you need to chase God. And we talked about uh, meditation, studying, mm -hmm. and prayer. Those yeah. three things. Those, if you just incorporate those three things in your everyday life, take time, meditate mm -hmm. a little bit, take time to read, study what, what God is saying so you can understand it, articulate it, and use it in your everyday life. And then the third thing, it's prayer. That's your intimate time with him. You have that time. That's what prayer is all about. And you can be in your quiet space and then maybe you're able to hear what he's saying. He may, mm -hmm. you know, communicate yes. with you. I was telling my friend today, I was like, oh my gosh, we had such a good time. I was talking about, you know, you got to, you got to be intimate with God. You on the phone with your boo talking about, mm -hmm. hey, how you doing? Yeah, babe, I love you. Yeah. Oh, but you know, you know, but you know, you, you on the phone, just whispering, right? Just, mm -hmm, you know, we had to, we had to wife whisper her earlier. Like, mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, babe. Well, you know what? Pick up that phone. <laughs> Hello, Lord. How you doing? That's right. That's Lord, right. You said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. I need <laughs> you, Jesus. Get on my, call him, call him. Have that intimate conversation with him. Right. And say, okay. And watch him just open the, the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That's all you have to do. That's all he wants. And that's he it. He wants us to connect. You're absolutely Period. right. And you know what? I, I couldn't have said that any better. Um, I, I've had that same experience. Um, about three years ago, I lost my husband. And uh -huh. as I had to go through a very difficult uh, space in my life, um, that is the way that I was able to begin this journey is to seek God's face. Um, literally, right. it was a, a relying on a supernatural power to move me into the space that I'm in today. So he gets all the glory, all the honor, yes. all the credit. Absolutely. Right, we got um, some more comments coming in. They, oh, yes. There's they no other way it. that this could have been done. Absolutely. So you better I, call him. That's right. God is good. We, you better call him. Right. And he want to hear it. Jesus, <laughs> call him. All right. We got to look. Uh oh. Lucille said, put that faith in action. Remember, Amen. faith. All right, has feet. Thank you, Lucille. Oh, I appreciate look at that. that. Yes, that's yes, right. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Has feet. Yes, ma'am. So that brings us to Miss Kim, what we're working on. Right? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. You gotta get the flyer up. That's right. Yes, we are getting ready. Yes, we are getting ready for our uh un do ordinary women's conference. conference. I'm so excited about that. Sabrina, if you can get that flyer, she's going to get it up for us. Yeah. Um, but tell us a little bit about, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Boat Rock. Absolutely. So Boat Rock Community Baptist Church, uh, where senior pastor Rico Miller is at the helm, and he has been the pastor there for a little under a year. And when I tell you he is undoing ordinary, he is undoing ordinary. Okay. So he's changing the way that we do things, and he has come in with this bold vision that God has given him, and he's putting everybody to work. So it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. He's making you go out of your comfort zone and do things uh -huh. differently. Undo ordinary. So not only is that his book title, that can be purchased on Amazon. Okay, <laughs> okay. It, also, it, it has also been uh, the, the topic and our discussion and our theme for the year. So um, as we're loving, leading, and training those to follow Christ, we uh -huh. are in the way that we are doing church, undoing just the, the norm. So right, we're not right. meeting in a church, we're, we're doing this virtually. So you have an opportunity to reach people, not only locally, but globally. So yes. we have an opportunity to- Put that, put that flyer yes. up, Sabrina. Yes, right. yes. <laughs> so yes. we you have You know what, guys? Phenomenal you can- and I love it because when I called you, you said, absolutely, absolutely. What do you need me to do? I'm in. And I love it. 
There it is. April 24th, guys. It's from 10 to 1. $10 donation. Go to www.boatrockchurch.org. Or is it boat? Yes, yeah, boatrockchurch.org. We have some other dynamic women that are on here. Dawn, you're going to be facilitating our panel. Um, but we have, uh, I can't read the ladies. I can't look. Judge, well, got to get Judge, my glasses. That's right. We got Judge Penny Brown, excuse me, Penny, Penny Brown Reynolds, excuse yes, me. Yes, Judge Penny Brown Reynolds. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we also have Miss Bianca Shelby, and we also have Miss Tanya Hughes, and, and, and none other than Dr. Kim McNair. So Woo! we have a powerhouse, and we've got Evangelist Denise Barrett that is going to be hosting and emceeing our executive pastor. So we are just in for an amazing treat, an amazing wow. treat. And looking forward to just having everybody join us on Saturday, April 24th. 24th. That's yeah. right. That is good. Yes. So I am so glad that we are going to have time to, to just really come together and fellowship together. Thank you, Sabrina. Yeah. And, and just fellowship together and just kind of talk about being, you know, extraordinary. You yeah. know, what I mean? that, you know, because why do it ordinarily? Do it, do right. it, you know, do it afraid, baby. Let's get That's out right. here and make it happen. And talking about, you know how we navigated to where we are right now. So I'm really excited about it. Absolutely. And I, I couldn't think of a better way to kick off this conference uh, than having you in this dynamic group um, to join us. So ladies, if you're ready to experience transformation, we're looking forward to seeing you. We're looking forward to having you get your tickets now boatrockchurch.org. And if you're, a, uh, if you'd like to sponsor, uh, if you would like oh, to yeah. sponsor your business, um, mm -hmm. We've got slots that are available. So again, you can go to boatrockchurch.org and you can find the sponsorship availability there as well. Yes. All right. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, now, do, do does, does does anybody know that you still you're dean, right? That you you know you you didn't mention that. You you you, you want to mention that a little bit? No, I said academics. Absolutely. I'm still I'm still doing my day job, Kim, but I'm also uh, moving in my other realm as well. Absolutely. So I am. All right. Here. So she is the dean for Devry University, guys. <laughs> oh, is is that my, did I say that right? You did. Okay, okay, okay. She said, that's look, right. I said, but look, that's all right. You're doing your purpose. We look, let me tell you, and it's not anybody. I know women that are general managers with some major corporations right here mm -hmm. in, in Atlanta, some of these big companies, y'all know. And they got side. I'm telling you, everybody yes. has something because look, if the pandemic ain't show us nothing, they show it they yes. can shut it down and shut you out and shut the door. That's right. And then what you gonna do? That's so right. believe you me, everybody has said, look, I better see really what my purpose is, what I need to be getting done over here, what I need to do on this side. It's mm -hmm. okay. It starts with a passion, right? It could be something that's a hobby passion that you'd like to do that can grow into something. I started my business. It come from my, what my, my profession was, you know, $500 in the dream. I just dug into what I love doing mm -hmm. and it grew and grew and grew. So I'm, you know, I mean, November, I'll be celebrating 30 years of KMP. So I'm like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. God has truly has shown me so much along this journey. I can't wait to share. And I have four different brands. I mean, I have KMP. I just funny. started a new, the collab car raiders. That's yep. coming up. Okay. I have BWP, my business women empowerment project, my nonprofit. I have this women on the move. So, right. hey. What? So we're moving. We're moving. We're moving. And it's, moving. It's, 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 so it's okay. You know, you can have multiple streams. You know, that's what God wants us to have. But of course, of course, out of everything I've done, pursuing him first, keeping him first, mm -hmm. and all everything will fall together. Some people say, oh, you're all over the place. Doing... No, I'm doing what I'm saying. I'm, it's, it's all aligned because it's all about platforms for women. I know. I know my purpose. I'm a servant leader. So I'm not going to start preaching here. Amen. I'm not going to do it. She's going to do that on the 24th. But, yeah, I'm saving. I'm saving save her for the 24th. <laughs> But you know, to your point, God makes room for our gifts. So absolutely. And yes. what I do right now um, for DeVry University is truly my passion. So it's helping others. So there's still that that stream of helping others. And I tell you, once people get their education, that is something that no one can take from them. That's, Not that's from one you. of those they, tangible that's, things. Woo. And, and it's, it's just so it. powerful to, to see that and to um, be a part of that graduation ceremony and to recognize that you have made a difference in someone's life. That is very yes. powerful. That's and powerful. Very rewarding. Absolutely. So we got so, some more comments. Hit them up, Sabrina. Who we got? We got, we got, Shanita said, okay, well, Priscilla White, you left one great, awesome person off the flyer. Oh, she said, 
Uh-oh. Okay, Priscilla, we got you next time. We got you next time. You said right. your, your we- information. I got you, girl. We got you. All right. You let somebody off and said, don't pick. Uh-uh. All right. Uh, Lucille said, no limit to what Amen. God allows us to do. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. No Touching limit. That's right. Touching Shanita said, amen to that. That's right. No <laughs> limit. Amen to that. That's right. Absolutely, Shanita. That's oh, Sabrina, awesome panelists. All right. But we love Prince. We got it. We, it's awesome, but we still got one great one that's still out there. Go on, Priscilla. That's right. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Priscilla. Send over your information, please. Yeah. That, all right, she's going to send over your information. Thompson <laughs> says, absolutely. I never can get to, oh, never take that away. That's right, girl. Well, look, this has been great, Dawn. Um, I've had a good time. I, I love it because, you know, this is, this is us. This is for us, about okay. us. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, okay, I'm on from six to seven. But, you know, when it's good and it's all <laughs> um, good, you got to keep going. You got to keep going, right? But we're going to be decent in that order. We're going we're gonna to stay in line with what we need to do. And everything mm-hmm. that happened this evening, everything that you shared right now, everything mm-hmm. we got from Dr. Lippman and Shania to mm-hmm. you has all been great information. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. been very motivational and inspirational for those who are tuning in. I think everybody took something away today. That's good Everybody. Stuff. And mm-hmm. I love the interaction with everybody coming on and bringing their mm-hmm. comments. And that's what it's about. So I just want to say thank you. I love you. And if nobody told you, you, I just did. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. Well, look, um, we'll be talking real soon, girl. It was great, guys. Didn't we have a good time tonight? This was awesome. I'm telling you, each week it gets better and better. And, uh, you know, I just feel so full because I know it's not me. It's him working through me to bring it to you. You know, I try to make sure that I I, I, I I look at the people or, or when I talk to guests, because you get requests, you get people wanting to come in. But I try to look at, and I can't get everybody on at one time, but I try to look at what's going to be meaningful and what's going to be a, have an effect and what's going to be empowering enough for each and every one of you. So I just want to thank you all for tuning in and, and, and coming into the room and answering the live, hit, seeing the alert, jumping on, getting in here with us and getting engaged with us. All right, Priscilla said, what, what you got, Priscilla? I think we got another comment here. Let's see. What she, what Priscilla said. Let me show you how I can fashion and get. Okay. Okay. Kimberly McNair, Brock, I need to talk. Okay. Okay. All right. We got it. We got to get it. So let me, what we going to end with? Let me get some ending music here. Let me see what, you know, cause I like to take y'all home with something. I want y'all to be thinking about, thinking about it when you, when, when we hang up and get off. Let's see what we got here. Let me find something good. I hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, you know what my favorite song is right now? I know y'all like it too, but we're going to leave the door open. Let's y'all, y'all like that one? Let's leave with a little leave the door open going on. I love you guys. Have some fun. Stay on the move. Hug somebody. And just like I told everybody else, I love you. And if nobody told you, I just did. This is Dr. Kim McNair, your woman on the move. I'll see you next week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah.